And all of us at some point deal with rejection. Some of us deal with it early on. Some of you, when I talk about rejection, some of you think of something right now that's very current. Some of you go back to high school. Many of you have been through a divorce. Some of you have been rejected by your parents. The Spirit of God brought you here to hear this. You may have been rejected by them, but you will never be rejected by Him. Sooner or later, everyone deals with rejection, but no one ever finds themselves rejected by God. They may have cast you aside, but God never did. Your ex may have cast you aside, but God never did and God never will. Your parents may have cast you aside, but God never did and God never will. Those people who you gave your life to, who you loved and who you thought they loved you in return, there was kindness, there was encouragement and what you got back from them was complete rejection. They may have rejected you, but God never did. And maybe you don't feel successful enough. Maybe you don't feel handsome or beautiful enough. Maybe you don't feel like you make enough, but God does not say you are rejected. God says you are mine. Everyone deals with rejection at some point, everybody. In fact, Hebrews chapter four tells us that Jesus dealt with all the same things that we would deal with. And he most certainly dealt with rejection. You know that Jesus was rejected by his family. John chapter seven, verse five says, for not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus was rejected in his hometown. Multiple accounts of him being in Nazareth. And they would say things like, who does this guy think he is? Where did he learn all the things they learned? Why is he teaching us in this way? In fact, at one point in Luke chapter four, verse 29, it says, this is his hometown crowd, that they rose up and drove him out of town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they could throw him off a cliff. Jesus knows exactly what it's like to deal with rejection. While Jesus is hanging on the cross for your sins and for mine, Matthew 27, verse 45 says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Despised, rejected for you and for me. He was rejected so that you would never have to be. They may have rejected you, but God never will. Rejection, rejection. It touches all of our lives. Nobody gets through without this. And it doesn't just touch our lives, it impacts how we relate with one another and relate to our world and relate to God. You need a plan for overcoming the wound. Ignoring it's not sufficient, denying it's not adequate. Jesus took our rejection. The people that should have accepted him, all he did was do miracles and raise the dead and open blind eyes. The sinless, obedient son of God. And we rejected him. We wanted nothing to do with him. We crucified him. He took our rejection that we could be accepted. Jesus in Psalm 22, these, these are the words Jesus quotes when he's on the cross, but it came from the Psalms. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus suffered rejection that you and I can be accepted. Because what I can tell you is that all of us have this deep longing for acceptance and all of us have some pains that come with rejection in our lives. As much as we'd like to think certain rejection and, and abandonment was a long time ago, it can affect who we are today. Let me just read a few words and you see what comes to your mind. Abandoned, betrayed, uninvited fired, excluded, abused, neglected, replaced, overlooked, forgotten. I just know a few feelings that are worse than that feeling of rejection, of longing to be accepted. And so here's the essential question though, does God accept me? Because if God accepts me, then it changes how I process the pain of rejection from other people. And, and God wants you to know that his acceptance is available to you today. And I would just say that acceptance from God heals a thousand wounds of rejection from others. I just think it can make all the difference. Look, if God accepts me, 
then I'm not haunted by my past because he knows everything there is to know about me. And if God accepts me, then I can stop comparing myself to other people as a way to feel better and more acceptable somehow. I can be free from the comparison game. If God accepts me, then the pressure's off and I don't have to spend my life trying to prove myself. If God accepts me, I don't have to chase success and accomplishments, always wondering, am I enough? If God accepts me, then I don't have to keep people at a distance because I'm afraid of being hurt. If God accepts me, then shame doesn't have to define me. If God accepts me, that I don't have to pretend or perform in hopes of other people liking me. If God accepts me, then I'm free to accept others, which is a beautiful thing. Paul goes back to Abraham after talking about David to show us that God doesn't accept me based on my outward accomplishments. Rejection. Getting over rejection is one of the most difficult things we have to do in life. Doesn't matter how old you are, how many seasons of life you live through, doesn't matter what ladder you've climbed in life. At the end of the day, none of us like to be rejected. There's something hurtful, and yeah, I say even harmful, when you realize that what you want didn't want you. That you applied and didn't get in. That you dreamed about it, but it never showed up. You prayed about it, but it never happened. Because at the end of the day, what you really wanted didn't want you as bad as you wanted it. And there's nothing that hurts and harms us more than being rejected. As a matter of fact, having a door slam close in your face can alter your journey of life forever. Jesus tells the story of a, a super religious man who goes into the temple and he's praying and he's thanking God that he's not like, and he points to a guy over in the corner, that guy. All right? He's a tax collector. He's a the religious man points out to God in his prayer, but really so other people that are around him can hear how and be impressed with how religious he is about how he, I give money uh, every time the offering. I give so much money here. And I, and I go sometimes days without eating just so that I can spend more and more and more time in prayer. Look at me, God. You're lucky to have me. Over in the corner, there's the other man, the tax collector. He's also praying, but he simply just goes to the corner of the, of, of the temple. He falls on his face and here's his prayer. God, have mercy on me. I know I'm messed up. I know, I know I'm a sinner. God actually listened to the humility of the broken man, people like that, but God has no time for it. God will not listen to the self-righteous prayers of a religious man. That when you continue to press through rejection this is what you're ultimately saying watch this you're saying that the one who rejected you doesn't have the final say over you the problem with most people with rejection is that they ask the wrong question they ask the question why when you should be asking what's next that the real thing you need to understand is not why I didn't get it which really does says okay Lord what's next for me you got to perceive that there's another possibility. Then maybe I'm closing this door. Because that's not where I want you to be. But, but if you will get over the rejection, if you won't allow yourself to become bitter, if you'll drop your pride, the Lord will redirect you. So may I make a suggestion? Quit trying to convince yourself you can be good enough to please God. You can't. You have to believe that Jesus did something for you. And then your life is a response to that incredible gift. God sent his to the son to the cross because he loves us. In Romans 15 and verse seven, it says, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. Christ accepted you. The creator of heaven and earth has accepted you. Yeah, but this person, the creator of heaven and earth, has accepted you. You lost your job? Man, there's real pain there. Don't give up. Your friend walked out on you? That hurts. Don't give up. Your spouse doesn't want you anymore? Man, that's traumatic. Don't give up. The question isn't, will I experience rejection? The question is, how will I respond to rejection? Galatians 6, 9 says this, let us not become weary in doing good, right? The thing that we were created to do. Let us not become weary in doing good for at a proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do what? If we do not give up. 
Psalm 27, 10 says, though my father and mother may forsake me, the Lord will receive me. We don't have any control over the past, but we do have control over what we believe in the future. You do have a choice and you can choose to overcome the spirit of rejection or to be overcome by it. You're accepted by God and God admires you and has unconditional love for you.